a lot of different applications for cold working on glass. Art glass, whether it's blown, slumped, fused, cast, optical glass, uh, down in the uh, tech display, guy selling shot glass, beautiful crystal glass. And that can be cut and carved and polished or cast into new shapes. But using optical glass is very pristine and different than a lot of us can make in our furnaces. And of course, everybody here has probably had someone with, come to you with a broken glass. Can you put this back together? Usually they say, can you melt it back together? I love it. Cold working applications for restoration and repair. Museums doing it all the time. And your neighbor's gonna want it done and then there's the scientific glass, glass field, or the uh, recreational glass. All needs to be worked. We're working with different kinds of glass, uh, offhand glass blowing, usually a soda lime glass. It's average in hardness, uh, polishes generally pretty nicely. And then we have um, lead crystal, whether it's decorative cutting or casting and then polishing. There's always the fight between people is lead glass easier or harder to polish. For some people it's easier, for some people it's harder. I personally don't see a whole lot of difference between it. The major difference is it's soft, so it scratches really easy. To me, soft glass polish is easier, but it's a little more fuzzy. And borosilicate, generally flame working. Uh, a lot of the artists now are getting into creating internal designs and casing with colors and all that and grinding or cutting and polishing to re reveal interior designs. Uh, what, what they're doing is, is really exciting. So there's really not a kind of glass that doesn't get cold worked. What we're grinding with. Aluminum oxide is the least expensive of abrasive medias. It doesn't stay sharp. It, it breaks down very easily and quickly but it's great in sandblaster. I use it in a sandblaster because I'm not doing production sandblasting. It holds up well enough for me. If you're doing a lot of sandblasting, you're gonna want silicon carbide. This is the type of abrasive that's encapsulated in some of the resin wheels, like I showed the colored ones, the, re uh, the pulper wheels. Pulper is the name of the company that makes them. Silicon carbide is probably the loose abrasive of choice. It starts sharp, stays sharp, gets everywhere in your shop and contaminates everything that you have, but it's wonderful stuff. And it's essentially reusable, whereas I, I think the aluminum oxide, probably not so much, uh, except in a sandblaster. In a sandblaster, this is, uh, gives, gives the quickest and sharpest cut. And then again, my personal favorite, the diamonds. Diamonds are, 20% you know, of the diamonds in the world are made into jewelry. The rest is, is mined, machined, engineered for industrial uses. And so it's not really in a shortage at all. Uh, De Beer says diamonds are forever. Well, they wear out. <laughs> and I'm counting on that. <laughs> there are different kinds of diamonds. There's natural diamonds that are engineered for electroplating. There's natural diamonds engineered for uh, sintering. In uh, the resin discs, uh, synthetic diamond is more engineered for that because it sticks to it better. Diamonds are really slippery, and it's hard to get anything to stick to it except electroplating, which will, the nickel will actually grow up around and hold the, uh, the diamonds in place. The diamonds used on flat discs should be a diamond that's engineered to break into sharp edges, so as it wears down, it remains sharp like a diamond disc that is uh, 60, 80 grit. It's a graded diamond, so there's different sized diamonds in there between 60 and 80. And when the diamond pad is brand new, you're hitting on maybe 10% of the diamonds, the 60 grit diamonds. And as they wear down, it becomes a 62 grit, it becomes a 68 grit, you know, eventually down towards the 80, and you're touching more and more of the diamonds. Now this is important with the size of the work that you're grinding, because the larger the surface area that you're grinding, the more diamonds you're contacting, it's supporting the glass more than, di more than grinding. So a diamond disc will seem to go dull quickly if you're doing large pieces, but it'll still be really sharp if you're doing something small. You can get a lot of pressure per diamond crystal. And in that case, when you're doing things large for the first grind, a lot of people will prefer loose grit, uh, silicon carbide on a, on a metal wheel. Um, it's more efficient and it's more dependable. Pumice is uh, generally used with cork, occasionally with felt. It's a natural product. It breaks down as it's being used into smaller crystals. It's also used as a pre-polish medium and quite efficiently. The big danger with uh, some of these slurries and, and grits like that 
are what happens to your, to your drains when it, when it ends up in there. Big in Europe are stone wheels, and a lot of people who have been trained or worked in Europe love the stone wheels over here, but it's hard to break people into stone wheels because it's difficult. It takes a lot of finesse, a lot of uh, maintaining of the wheels, profiling, shaping, always in need of dressing. When you're doing brilliant cutting or, or decorative cutting like this, it's really nice and smooth and it, it's just a wonderful way to go if you have the ability and the, uh, the capability. For finishing the glass, for pre-polishing, th there's a number of manufacturers out there making all kinds of really nice tools. Most of the tools in our glass industry have been adopted and brought in from the stone industry. It's a much bigger business. Not all abrasives geared for stones are good for glass. Uh, what doesn't seem to scratch stone will scratch glass. We, in, in our business, as we outfit people to, uh, to understand and, how, and work with, uh, with, with tools, we'll take the tools from the stone industry and then we'll bring in diamonds and abrasives that are more applicable and suitable for glass. A couple of these are 3M products, uh, the pulper wheels, uh, hand pads, a lot of different ways of working with the glass. And then there's cerium, and there's another fight between glass people is how it actually works. Cerium is a very, very fine powder. Generally, the size of it, if you understand what a micron is, it's uh, two to three microns in size. 325 grit is 54, 55 microns in size. So it, it, it's getting down there really small. Some people will say it's a chemical polish, chemical action. Some people will say it takes a lot of heat to polish. I disagree with the heat because it works really well in a reciprocal lap and that stays cold. But again, it's a mechanical polish. It is actually removing the glass because each step of grinding and polishing, you've got to get below the scratches from the previous step. So a 60 grit is going to make horrible scratches. Then you go to a 270 and that'll get all that glass off and make new 270 scratches and then on and on until you're, you're you, you've sunk into the glass sufficiently to get to a flat glass. How it works, I don't really care. It works. <laughs> so it, it comes down to pri priorities. Water is, uh, is important with any step. We don't want to heat the glass. We don't want to break the glass. We don't want glass dust airborne. The amount of water is extremely important with abrasives. If you're slurry grinding or diamond grinding, too much water, especially with finer grits, your glass will hydroplane. It'll just float above the surface, nothing will happen, and all of a sudden it'll grab suction and your work goes flying across the shop. Who hasn't done that? <laughs> That's how I got into diamond. I was working on some sculptures and my, 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 I was working on like an eight inch sphere. By the time it would, I was done, it was six inch because it kept flying across the room and had to grind off more. <laughs> so there's a history as to why I'm doing this. <laughs> now with diamond, you want a lot of water with the rough grit because you want to wash away that ground glass because if you don't have a lot of water, then you'll get this paste of glass and you'll get the same suction. You've got to finesse it. The finer grits, the less water. All the way down to the cerium polish, you really just need enough water to keep the pad damp and to keep the glass cool. That's where heat and friction helps the polishing uh, when you're polishing by hand. Cleanliness is important. With the diamond tools, it's nice because one machine can do all the steps with no contamination because everything gets run off the edge. With uh, slurry grinders, typically they'll have one machine for each grit. If you only have room for one machine, then you're spending a lot of time cleaning between steps if you're doing more than one. Water will keep your glass intact. There's an ad we used in Australia.